I am so excited because I have my friend Katrina Galka here with me, uh, esteemed soprano, wonderful person, uh, personal coach, life coach, uh, coach for artists, all of the above. And uh, yeah, fantastic singer. She is very busy and she has taken time out of her very busy schedule at the ripe time of 10 a.m., which is really not that early. <laughs> Uh, but here we are. Uh, it feels <laughs> early. You, you <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> it's so good to see you again. When's the last time we hung out? I think we hung out in, uh, oh my God. Was it Arizona? That was nearly 10 was years Arizona, ago. Arizona, a very long time ago. Not that long ago, but like no, no, maybe was, seven, or eight, seven or eight years ago. Was it 2000 and, oh my, that was 2018. Yeah, it was a long time ago, five years that ago. That feels like an eternity ago. Yeah, it does. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> you're out and about. You're doing a bunch of stuff. Um, what's coming up next for you? You're Are you going back to Germany? I'm going to Italy and I'm making my debut at La Scala. What the fuck? You are? Yeah. Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, my God. What are you singing in La, at La Scala? I'm singing First Niece and Peter Grimes. Wow. Yeah. So All you like, Italians. Oh, we need an English speaker. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my I God, that's English amazing. Really well. Yeah. I speak English. Yeah. It's my native tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Have you that been doesn't to happen a lot in opera. I know. Where, for like, real. isn't an advantage to speak English? Um, I have just for the audition. I was in Milan. Yeah. It's, it's a nice city. It's a nice yeah. city. Uh, but you've mostly spent your time in Germany and, and the US, but mostly you, a lot of your big debuts have happened in, in Germany, right? Yeah, Germany or like German speaking countries. So I actually my first debut was in Austria and then I sang in Switzerland and then I just made my German debut um, about a year ago. So this last season. Amazing. And then you're yeah. and you're gigging around in the U.S. now, too. Yep. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. Good. Well, yeah. I'm going to wake you up with a yes. bunch of... <laughs> A bunch of soprano songs today. Today's Great. theme is soprano music and uh, the wide swath of 40 years of video game history and some fun little things in the middle too, like just to kind of better bops or some slower stuff. There's a lot of interesting stuff that we're going to listen to. So first up, we're going to listen to uh, In the Flood, which is uh, from Horizon for Forbidden West, which is uh, the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, it just came out recently. Uh, if you want to check out this full video and any of the videos, uh, I'm, I'm doing something different this video. I'm letting you know the titles of the songs, but then if you want to watch the whole thing, check out Marco Meatball Vods for the whole uh, video just so that everyone knows what's in this video, even though this is the reduced version on the main channel. Their kindness calls to me I have to block it out My voice has grown so somber These words don't seem like mine But the iron won't subside No matter, no matter what I try Oh 
What do you make of that? Well, I have so many ideas and thoughts. I mean, first of all, I love a good ballad. So this is a great ballad, but I'm also used to um, honestly, like more like pop music or, or like musical theater stuff. So I was like, where's the big refrain? When's the big yeah, refrain right. coming? And then I was like, oh, this isn't like that. There's no big refrain. It all just is kind of like building, 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 telling the story, I, mm -hmm. but it was great. I just yeah. felt like the verse kept coming back a little bit, um, but like more intense, more drama. Um, <laughs> but I, I loved her voice. I really, yeah. I love that kind of singing. Um, that kind of folk indie Americana approach where it's like kind of breathy, but you get like this purity of sound in the voice. Like I'm like, Oh, I, I feel like I know who this person is. Or like, if I mm -hmm. talk to them, I'd be like, Oh yeah. You, you talk similar to how you, you sing a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which in opera, I mean, they say, it's supposed to be like, like come si canta, or, you know, it's exactly, you speak how it's, you sing. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true for opera. No, <laughs> I'm talking like this, and then all of a sudden I open my mouth, and then it's like, whoa, oh, yeah, not yeah. the same at all. <laughs> not the same. Do you feel like, uh, like do you feel like you got like a characterization of, uh, you know, I, I really do feel like so the main character in this game, Aloy, is very powerful and, and vulnerable and, and strong female character, and, and um. You know, I was curious, like, I, if, if it, it's interesting because at, from a lyrics perspective, it tells a story, but I also wonder if it, like, helps describe, like, the character a bit. Like, and I was sort of curious what it, what if, besides just being, like, a pretty song, what else you picked up on in terms of um, uh, characterization, if anything? Yeah. <clears throat> I feel like I was getting... Um... I mean, yeah, I feel like I was getting like Katniss Everdeen vibes. Like, I mean, I'm just going to refer to pop culture because I don't no, know as anything you should. about video games. You don't games. know anything about video games. Yeah. So I was just like, oh, this is a strong female for sure. Like warrior, heroine. That was the vibe I was getting, um, which I love. So I, I did feel that in the voice, in the singing, in the music. I loved like when the strings came in, like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, what like, rich beautiful sound i loved when she near the end it was like into the flood and then like there was all this technical stuff so that her voice like obviously she wasn't singing anymore but there was like the reverb of it like electronically that kept going yeah, yeah. i was like that was cool i mean we can't do that with our voices as live singers so i like and those effects yeah it's a funny it's a funny discussion opener too though if you think about it because so many people will say that you know the purity of like classical singing and how you need to like you know we shouldn't be evolving in the sense that like you know it's always better live and all this other stuff and i personally i think maybe over the last couple months and years of being away from the opera scene i'm like embrace digital baby you know what i mean because like sure. but the, the thing is we can we can have things like this and i think that live performance is important but i don't think that we can get become so pure to what i don't know because it's isn't it are we just trying to replicate something that we can't really be pure to anyway because of the modern time we live in you know what i mean right like we can't pretend like all this other stuff doesn't exist um yeah. i think you know i think that there's a time and place for everything and like the, the way that we sing as opera singers is, I think, is better live. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So that's my opinion. But, but I think that there's something about the sound being unamplified and the, the whole way that we sing is, on, is purposefully meant to, you know, we don't need the microphones. Yeah, and right. because of that, like, there's this balance of sound. There's this way of, like, using the voice that when you're in the hall, like when you're in the room with the person using their voice that way, it like vibrates into your body and it's really cool. It's a really unique experience that we're not used to having either um, in the 21st century where we're really used to think to sound being digitalized. But that being said, like I don't have anything against recordings. I think you're right. Like if we want to reach audience, like a typical modern audience, like absolutely let's record our voices um, so that people can actually hear it. But, you know, if you're, if you're all listening to some more and more opera bit by bit, like think about seeing it live. Cause it's a whole different experience. It's very, 
visceral and it's it moves true. you experience it in a different way. Yeah, it's true. I mean, yeah, and you touch on a really important thing too. And I'm, I'm certainly not diminishing the fact that live performance is so. You know, I actually haven't seen that many live operas. Like I've been in really. I've You've been just been in, in them all the time. I've just been very <laughs> I love busy. that. But but like it's true though that you you bring up a good point. I had a, a really interesting sense memory to when I was in. Uh, I saw an opera for the first time after hearing only amplified or only album performances, and so when we got there my expectations for what it sounded like were so different because we're so used to having that sound directly in our ears. But when it comes you're right, there is a sort of vibration that occurs when you hear a singer and you're like, let's say middle orchestra back. And it's bizarre that you like the, everything is a little bit muted compared to how we hear it in our ears, but yet it is a more visceral experience because, um, because it's a person directly in front of us. And like when, as we, you know, as you as a soprano, you're hitting your upper register or me as a tenor hitting the upper register. Like there's something that's really like, I don't know. It, it's a very human experience to, to witness. Yeah. yeah, very much so. I think you said it beautifully. Yeah. Well, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> so speaking of opera, I wanted to show you uh, an example of opera in um, a video game. Uh, this is from a game that is really not talked about very often anymore, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, they really should remake it. It's called Parasite Eve. And uh, it's a very complicated plot that I honestly can't remember too well. I don't even think I played the first one, but there is an opera scene in here. And uh, let's just say that things, uh, things are pretty operatic. She's going to the opera. She's going to the opera. I'm trying to think what opera house this looks like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, where is this? <laughs> Somewhere in Europe. <laughs> per usual. <laughs> Well, that has to be a similarity between opera and video game music, which is like the heightened drama, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Burn her! Oh, Now we get the aria. Oh. <laughs> oh. So it comes out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. She's a real witch. <laughs> I understand why they wanted to burn her now. <laughs> burn before getting burned. This is kind of intense. <laughs> this is when she turns into mitochondria Eve. All the while she's singing. All the while she's still singing. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, 
Well, I don't know if anyone is going to come to the opera after that. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> that does not happen. <laughs> that does not happen at the opera. That doesn't happen when I sing. <laughs> <laughs> but I find it interesting that they use – the reason why I show that is that, like, yeah. uh, you know, first of all, it is the sort of, like, obviously it was fictional rendition of what an opera experience is like, but also the fact that they're using, like, fairly legitimate, uh, obviously for the time, the, yeah. the sort of, like, wave midi sound quality to represent you know it's probably played on a keyboard and, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> but it's it's sort yeah. of interesting how that the the game characterizes like an opera performance everyone's wearing their tuxedos and yeah right yeah totally yeah it, it was very it felt very much about like the setting of the opera house yeah this grand stage you're right the people who are all dressed up and sitting and watching and and she in her like costume from a like kind of like a renaissance esque not exactly but that kind of a costume that you you expect traditionally to see when you go to the opera um yeah do you, do you feel like uh stuff like that i mean this is obvious this game was also from like 1990 something but but or early thousands but like obviously the the conceptions have changed about what we know but like do you, do you feel like do you feel like there's a shift in opera where we're trying to move away from the like formality of it all? Or do you think that that is still like a, a present thing that could possibly be a um, barrier for people? You know what I mean? Or are there, mm -hmm. are there, are we doing the best we can to uh, be stewards of like a relaxed experience? Or do you think that there's still like this, like elitism in opera? I think it's half and half. I think I mean, how political do we want to get? Um, I mean, it's up to you. <laughs> yeah, I think that what sometimes what the artists want and then what the people who support opera want might be at odds or even like mm -hmm. what the administration of a company wants to do could be at odds with um, what the, the supporting audience members want. Um, and it's complicated, you know, opera, there's so many different kinds of operas too. Um, and people come to the opera for so many different reasons. Some people come because they want to see the traditional performance. Other people come because they want to see something new that they've never seen before. Some yeah. people come to, to see an old work remade in a new way. Other people, it's just about the singers. Other people love the whole like orchestra with the drama, like I find the more I talk to people who come to the opera, everyone has a different reason for being there. And I think that that makes it really hard for companies that try to bring in audiences. What, who, which person are you talking to? Who do you to? target? Yeah. There's no target who audience you per se. To? Right. Um, so do I think that it's still elite? I mean, it depends first of all, what house you go to. There are people doing opera outdoors and that's certainly mm -hmm. not, nobody's going to be wearing a tux at an outdoor performance. Um, you know, here where we are, I'm working at the Glimmerglass Festival in upstate New York. It's a much more relaxed environment and atmosphere. Um, so, so, you know, it just depends. I think if you go to the Metropolitan Opera, I've gone not being dressed up before and I felt perfectly comfortable, but I'm also very um, aware of the world, you know, like it doesn't hold the same maybe mystique for me. So I feel comfortable going in my jeans but many, many, many people are quite dressed up still. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really interesting thing, actually. I mean, I remember I would purposefully wear, like, I mean, I wouldn't go in pajamas, let's say, but I was, <laughs> could you sure. imagine this yeah. going, hey! <laughs> but I, I certainly would wear, like, you know, a hoodie and and jeans. And, and because because there is, like, a degree of, like, not wanting to um, – to sort of like deviate from that standard of like, well, no, everybody should be invited to this experience because it is a moving important thing that mm -hmm. societally I think uh, has unfortunately still this weird uh, connotation that it's, it's not for me, you know what I mean? Or it's not for you or them or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I will it's say an this, there's also, thing. yeah. And there's also this, this expectation that opera is extremely expensive and it can be, you know, some of those seats are very expensive, like sometimes over $200 or, you know, who knows, um, for a seat. But I find that most opera companies, if you if you actually look, like you can, and sometimes if you even ask, like they'll sometimes have special deals for people under 40. 
um, students, et cetera, you can almost always find a seat for under $30, yeah. which, you know, that's pretty reasonable. Not for everyone. Compared, but yeah, but, but compared to a possibly, sports event. Yeah. Oh, yeah, or compared to, like, a Taylor Swift concert these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's really true. I mean, the sheer amount of money that it costs to to put these things on, it's it's a really interesting conversation about, like, the the culture surrounding opera. And, and one of the things that I've tried to do on this channel is just sort of demystify what, what yeah. it means, to, what opera even is and what it means. And uh, mm -hmm. not that I would call myself an opera advocate per se, but certainly – you know, it's, I can't escape who I was and am uh, as a singer. So, yeah, I, anyway, that's that's a tangent. Let's listen to um, something really crazy. You want to just want to go off the deep end here? Yeah, let's do All right. it. Let's do it. This is from a game called Undertale. This is called uh, Metaton EX Death by Glamour is the name of the song. Um, it's it's very much a vibe. This robot turns into a humanoid dancing uh, um, like thing you fight and uh, the music is very it's it, it's in like a like a style from you know a much older game from like you know the SNES era or like something that you're probably more familiar with but uh, but the mm -hmm. music is actually modern and it came out about seven years ago nine years ago uh, cool. it's from Undertale yeah <laughs> okay tell me why 40, 40 seconds in i was like when's the singing gonna start <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was no singing in that one okay and well, a minute and a half and i was like oh my god i need this to stop <laughs> <laughs> was it too much chaos what what what, what why do you feel that it way? was the repetition it was the repetition mm. and the electronic all electronic instruments yeah that i just like I don't have, I do not have patience for, I'm not, I'm not an EDM fan. Yeah. Yeah. It just yeah. reminded me of that kind of music. Yeah. It, it does have that sort of forward momentum. 
But at first, the first 40, the first like minute I was like, I could get into this. I could get into this. And then I was like imagining how like the singing would track over it. I was getting excited. And so I think that's why I was like, there's no singing. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. I did say that this was almost all vocals. So I led you astray. But no, but that's an interesting discussion because, uh, you know, a lot of people love this music and, and yeah, which is totally. fine. No one has to yuck anybody's yum here. But like just in terms yeah. of uh, of you know, it's such a, you, this is such a style of a game that was like popular in the like mid nineties. You know what I mean? Like it's very mm-hmm. reminiscent of like a super Nintendo or, or that sort of thing. And it's, it's a different kind of, of music that we're used to, you know what I mean? Because we listen to classical music or, or even just like things with real instruments or, or synthesizers that are really, really well done where you can't tell the difference. And like, yeah. So mm-hmm. it's interesting that you had such a visceral reaction to it. I love that. Well, I wonder too, like, I wish somebody could, I'm not a, I'm not a brain scientist, but it'd be interesting to see like what happens to hormone levels and like what is happening in the brain when this music is happening. Cause <laughs> I felt like, I could see it being a very addictive experience after a while. Like it almost fades into the background, but it's like there's yeah. something about it that just keeps you going, going, going. And yeah. the music loops and loops and loops and never ends. So I could see it being like, I understand why they used it for sure. And it would be great if you're just like playing this game forever and you don't want somebody, somebody to stop maybe. Um, I don't know why it, that maybe it like triggered some kind of anxiety in me. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to do you, well, we'll, to, we'll go slow the next Xanax. track. Don't worry. But but do you think that <laughs> I need a Xanax? But do you think that uh, do you think that if like you were to experience like this while fighting this character, that maybe that would would cause a different emotional response in you rather than just like casually listening to it? Or do you oh, think that you would intrinsically yeah. not like it? No, no, no. I think you're totally right. I think that if I were fighting a character and I'm like in this mode of like I'm a warrior, I'm a fighter, I'm gonna win. Yeah, this music is totally in alignment with that kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it goes to it goes to explain that like I think a lot of ways actually opera and video games are not dissimilar where I I remember distinctly listening to Madama Butterfly act uh, act 1 final duet and being like this is good but <sighs> it's fine. You know, and then you watch it and you're like holy crap, this is like rich. Um and it's a, it's a funny discussion because I believe that context doesn't necessarily matter for video games, but I think mm-hmm. I think that may be because I'm also a gigantic video game fan. So like I sort of understand the tropes of to why things are the way they are musically. But I feel mm-hmm. like most people that I speak to in in uh, in discussion all agree that context is king, especially when you're talking about programmatic music, you know. And, and as mm-hmm. you know, and I know, opera music is completely programmatic, basically. Um, mm-hmm. and it's imperative in telling a story and much of, much of these songs are the same way you need them. They don't really stand alone. It's very hard to find a standalone track that will not need context. It's, it's a really interesting discussion about, you know, can people go and listen to an opera and actually be moved the same way as if they, you know, as if they see it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I personally, I'm not the type of person that just listens to opera unless I'm studying for, right. for a job and that's, that's my style, but it's because I, I do very much like the story, the drama, how it plays out uh, in the context. The so I think that that's super relatable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's cool. I, I appreciate you uh, telling me your candid uh, thought process on that. And also like some <laughs> tracks, maybe you're just not, maybe some tracks are just not good out of context and that's okay too, but it's, it's a really interesting, I think, here we'll we'll pivot here really quickly to um to this so this is a track called grandma from near uh it's from a game called near uh gestalt and a near replicant i should say uh both and um it is uh, it uses this language called the chaos language uh which is a fictional language and it does hang on i just scared myself by playing a different track (laughs) and um it uh it I don't even remember necessarily the context of it. I think it, I don't remember where it plays. Oh, it, it, it plays when, uh, when someone comes face to face with like, uh, a, a thing that kind of messed up their life a little bit. And, uh, mm-hmm. and I'm curious to, to see and, and to hear 
your perspective on um, how uh, language matters or doesn't matter. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, we'll go in with that and then see. It. Hopefully you like it. And if you hate it, well, just tell me it. It's okay if you hate it. You could hate everything on here and I would be happy. It'd be fine. Uh, oh no. I like that. The first one is my favorite so far. I really liked that. Yeah. Well, yeah. The first one's great. What do you think? Mm. Yeah, I liked it. It was very evocative. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> I, I think I was <laughs> like listening to it. I felt very moved by it. The voice was really expressive and sympathetic. And then like when this when the percussion came in, I was like, oh, there's there's drama here. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what it's about, but I was interested. It, it, it did feel like there was a story um, yeah. that I was interested in. I think that's what I mean by evocative. Yeah. I think it's interesting how, you know, w- we often sing pieces that are strophic and they repeat. And I think for both artist and audience, sometimes it can be like, all right, well, what time is it? But I think uh, <laughs> what's really smart about this is that you're right. Like adding the drums actually adds that layer of, uh, of tension in a, you know, it, it's interesting too, that we don't necessarily need to know words in order to understand 
drama, which is, is which ties to opera, where it's like, you know, you don't need mm-hmm. to understand the language. If, if the performer is doing their job, which in which case, in this case, Emmy Evans has done a great job. You don't mm-hmm. need to know what someone is saying to really grasp it, right? And that's totally. a pivotal point, you know. Totally. Yeah. And I was thinking as I was listening to this, like, oh, if people like the, if someone likes this song, they should listen to like some art song by List or like even some <laughs> Debussy, you know, like yeah, there, yeah, there yeah. are parallels there. You know, it's going to, it's going to have a little, obviously it's going to be a little different because different time times that they were created, but right. yeah, there's totally parallels. In that, it it in does that have music. an art song yeah. quality to it, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, very much so because of the piano like playing these, uh, these patterns, these arpeggiated uh-huh. patterns. That's what made me think really list. Um, mm. But yeah. Yeah. And then the voice, the voice and piano, that's really, that's always going to be art song. That's yeah. the jam. All yeah. right. Let's keep her going. We've only, we only let's have do- half hour left. So we got to We got to oh. hustle. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, so that was slow. Do you want something upbeat? Yeah. Wake. Let's wake back up. Do you want something silly and playful or do you want something? Oh, you've sung Titania, haven't you? Never the whole role. No. But, but you know, like, is. yeah. Yeah. Well, let's listen to this rendition of Titania then from Final Fantasy 14. Mm-hmm. It's going to be very different than what you're used to. Um, and I, I'm, I'm very curious to see how you'll receive it. We won't listen to the whole eight minutes. I think from now on, we'll just do like pieces of, of tracks rather than whole tracks. So because I am a singer, at first I couldn't, even, I wasn't even watching any, well, first the image came up and I was like, holy shit, these graphics are gorgeous. This is cool. Um, <laughs> like the visuals, amazing. And then the, the voice started and I like, was all, and the, there was a caption. So it was like, I was totally like tunnel vision. Like, <laughs> he was glued like, it. I was too, actually. I was, I was like, they- and it, it reminds me of, I don't know if anyone knows Joanna Newsom, but she's like a folk indie song, singer oh, songwriter. She plays harp and she's, I, I love her stuff, but it's really offbeat, kind of this really kiddish voice. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> that's where my mind went. I was like, 
Joanna Newsom. <laughs> um, <laughs> obviously, it wasn't her. It was not her voice, but um, it reminded me of that. And then, um, but then I was like, finally, like I could zoom out and I could see the drama, and I was like, okay, Titania, you badass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really it, impressed. It- by the like it's so interesting I, because i'm not i don't do a lot of video game stuff like seeing these female these really strong female characters like yeah like aggressive almost in a way yeah but yet yeah, they're like yeah. gorgeous <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think the term is waifu is what you're going for yeah they're they're, 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 they're very yeah it's true and I mean, did yeah. you like that singing wise? Did you find that that was interesting or was it kind of like jarring? Cause it is, it is a certain type of vibe, you know what I mean? Well, I think that's why I was thinking, I, it really brought out just like you have this, I don't know. It just is making me think of like gender stereotypes. Cause you have this voice that's kind of almost infantilizing in a way. Like it sounds like a child and like the fa la la la, you know, is, is very childish um, but then like, and then you have this obviously woman, not a girl, mm-hmm. but who's uh, like particularly aggressive and like strong and powerful. So I, I don't know what to make of it, but just like all of like the dichotomy of all of that was really what just captured yeah. my attention. I was like, whoa, this is weird. <laughs> what is this <laughs> world? I don't know. Yeah. Did I'll I like the it. voice? Nah, I don't know. I would, it wouldn't be my fine. first choice. I think Joanna Newsom. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think that's completely fair. I mean, yeah, it's a a weird one for sure. Um, Okay, so this is Last Surprise from Persona 5. It's it's a great bop. We'll, We'll listen to about half of it. listen to it again Uh there's something I do think it was like the voice that distracted me I didn't like the clippy delivery of the text is very very particular I love it it was like (laughs) weird I just wanted more of like a line (laughs) it's it's very rhythmic right it's very (laughs) rhythmic but but it it could also be the style because it does feel like it's in that jazz sort of uh like 60s swing midtown you know, yeah. but it is interesting that you caught onto that. And it's such a singer thing to notice, which I think a lot of people don't yeah. take into consideration is that we often pick up on the way that people deliver lines in, in vocalism, because it's just, that's what we're yeah. trained to do, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. tough crowd. Yeah. Katrina Galka, Galka, I Katrina know. Galka. Tough crowd. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let's keep on I moving. Love I love it. I love your, it. like, you know, <laughs> your, your, um, Okay, let's see here. I have yes. opinions. I have opinions. Oh, no, no, as you should. I mean, I think I don't think there's anything wrong with opinions. Um, okay, we're gonna listen to something really fun. This is the main theme from Super Smash Bros. Brawl. <laughs>
thoroughly enjoyed that. I did. <laughs> I really did. Um, but it was very operatic, like very, um, yeah, like those to me were like totally trained operatic voices. Yeah. So that's like yeah. the idiom I'm used to. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Listen to them singing it out. I love it. The drama. Um, it reminded me of like Mozart Requiem, but with a lot yeah. of drums. <laughs> <laughs> I love like the interplay of you know, the chorus and then like the soprano uh-huh. came in. Then the like the baritone. The I was tenor saying, I was for sure. It was a tenor. tenor. Oh, no. It was a Sorry. lyric tenor. That's a beat flap. So sure. His voice was so rich. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, then the te- the tenor comes in, and it reminds me of like the polyphony that you have in like Mozart Requiem, for example. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's crazy that, that that video it came out. They dropped this video in particular. I mean, this I forget when this game came out, but this video has 11 million views, and it's so funny because opera doesn't sound anything different than this. No. Gloria, pa, ra, pa, 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 pa. why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, if you like that, totally. you like opera. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> I'm sorry yeah, to say that is literally opera. That is totally opera. But it, it, you know, it's an interesting discussion on like what people believe and mm. feel classical music and opera music is. They think mm-hmm. it's something that this isn't, but this Super Smash Brawl main theme <laughs> is opera. And it's a funny, yes. it's a funny thing that we're always trying to, I feel like, and I don't know if you relate to this, but like you're always trying to advocate for opera, like almost defend it, or it's like d- justifying yeah. the pursuit of it. You know, Mm -hmm. Mm. I think I think I used to do that. And I think nowadays I just kind of like what you're doing. Like, I just want to share with people what it is. But you're right. There's a little bit of defending it. You're totally right. Because you just want people to see it's not that different. It's not that foreign. It's not that crazy, really, because I just want people to come and enjoy it. Um, Because, you know, it's something that that I love doing. and I love being a part of. So, you know, you want to share it with as many people as possible. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also there's, I mean, there's so much to glean from it and there's so much that oh, even yeah. in this, in this day and age, there's so much value in, in well, good. And the stories, not the stories are, are epic. They're epic, mm-hmm. you know, and you mm-hmm. can leave in some stories you might like, some stories you might not like, just like when you go to the movies, you know, it's no different. <laughs> You get to talk about it at the end. Like, whoa, what do you think about the fact that she decided to give her life for that jerk? Yeah, right, <laughs> <Why> right. She... <laughs> yeah, why would she do that? You know, but I think people get that? caught up in like, oh, the singing and there's no words. And it's like, no, nah, bro, just like try it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's try totally. it. So speaking of opera, I've got another one for you. Uh, this is called La Signora. So actually in Genshin Impact here, this game, um, all the bad characters are named after Comedia de l'Arte characters. Adlequino, oh, Pulcinella, Capitano, uh, you know, Scaramucho. And in this case, this is La Signora, which, you know, she's the, she's, she's pretty cool. So we're going to skip to um, minute 359. It's a uh, phase two, second phase.
I'm just even more convinced that if we just added like strong drum beats to every opera, <laughs> that people would be obsessed. <laughs> That's like the only difference. <laughs> yeah, with some electric guitar, modernize it a little yeah. bit, bump it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Do you like that piece? Did you like that piece? Um, I thought it was fun. Yeah, I did. I, I don't know if it's like my favorite piece yet, but mm -hmm. I did not like it. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because uh, there is such a wide swath of co like types of singing in video games. There's no like regulations. And so it mm -hmm. allows for like such a diverse way of experimentation with different things. And we've heard a lot of diversity, I think, in these tracks. And they've all sort of been unique mm -hmm. in their own way. Um, it's amazing to me how, well, I'm curious to you, like, and, you know, none of these tracks have been the same. What's your perspective, like, even so far after listening to these? Because you've been kind of a tough cookie. I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, I gotta, I gotta bring really? out the big guns here. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so, I, tough? Try. Uh, I didn't realize like, I was tough. <laughs> I thought I was being discerning but generous. <laughs> you are. You know, you're very discerning but generous. But my my thought is like, like what of the last like several tracks that we've listened to and I want to, I want to try to grab like just a couple more before we end, like what's your, what's been your perspective and has, has anything shifted in terms of what you were, what were you expecting more so? And then what are you sort of coming away with now? Yeah. What was I expecting? Hmm. You know, something like this last one that we just listened to, I'm not surprised that that's like a bit, that's that's video game music. Like there's a part of me that does expect that kind of epic quality. Um, and I've heard that like sometimes you'll have like that kind of operatic vocal quality. Um, so it doesn't surprise me. Um, probably the one that surprised me the most was the I don't remember any names of it. Oh, the Titania one. Oh, that yeah. was like the the weirdest. I was like, whoa. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you're right. There's like such a vast array of styles and then like different ways of using the voice. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't have anything really interesting to say about it other than I think I'm, I'm always kind of open to anything. So yeah. I, I'm not too surprised. I think I'm just excited to listen to it. And there are things that like make me think, oh, maybe I would like playing video games. Um, I pause because they make me feel kind of sick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I get nauseous. Um, but I re yeah, I like tried out the Oculus thing. That's kind of oh, well, cool. Yeah, I know cool, that's different. That's VR. It'll definitely make you throw up for sure. Well, <laughs> let's um Halo too. I used to play Halo. That made me so oh, did you? nauseous. Oh, uh, because first oh. person shooter, that's why, especially in that yeah. time period. <clears throat> I'd be mm, curious to okay. know like what so what a what again. a third person game where you're like <clears throat> top down or like shoulder over the shoulder. Uh, how yeah. that would okay. how would rather than like in the like <clears throat> yeah. Okay, well, I gotta get so okay. Conclusion is I gotta give it another go. I gotta give video games probably, another go. Probably. Yeah. Probably a, yeah. lot, a couple.
I liked that one a lot. You vibe with it that? It was really well. Yeah, I really liked it. It was really well done. I think like just the way that it used that rhythm and like the certain like underlying patterns to build tension and then like would throw in like a rhythmic moment that you weren't expecting mm. or would like had this feeling of build and then it would just drop off. So you never get the like actual climax of the phrase. So you're just like, <gasps> I need to keep Un listening. I need to keep listening. I need until, that. Until. Until. Yeah. That yeah. Big release with the soprano. Right. Exactly. Oh <laughs> yeah. And I loved, um, yeah, I love the way that they use the voices. Really cool. Um, I liked that there was no text, right? There was no text. It was just voices I think, on all. I think it's some Latin comes. text, but yeah, oh, but maybe there's, some Latin it's mostly the odd. Lower voices. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I really liked it. And then it sounded like it was like, um, it just sounded very well produced, to be honest. Like they had a full orchestra. They got to record with an orchestra live. And then like, of course, like produced Recorded and it added yeah. synths. And, yeah, yeah, but that was great. It was really good. Good, okay. I'm glad we ended with that one. So I guess, you know, <laughs> with the two minutes we have left, like uh, uh, mm -hmm. I, I suppose it's, it, you know, it's a, it's a funny experiment because in a way I'm trying to evangelize video game music, but also, you know, I think it's also a really interesting conversation about like what, what is video game music anyway? And it's such mm -hmm. a broad umbrella term. And, and, um, you know, how, what have you come away with, I guess, after like this hour mm -hmm. of just listening to a, kind of a, a smorgasbord of stuff. It's pretty random. Yeah, no, I loved it. Honestly, it makes me think about video game music totally differently. Um, I hadn't considered, I hadn't considered it as like a genre of music per se, or like something that I would like think, Oh, I'm going to go listen to that. Yeah. But I mean, it's great. It's well-made. It's well-crafted. It's cool. Cause it pulls from all kinds of different styles. Um, and what I love is that it's storytelling music, which is really at the end of the day, that's what I, I love. That's why I love opera. That's why I, I love um, musical theater. It's why I love like singer songwriters, that kind of yeah. indie style. So really this is cool. It really lives in that same world and, and the diversity of it is amazing. Like you could find, you could easily find something that you loved. I think it's impossible yeah. not to, if you just listen to enough stuff. Like I'm like, I got a, that first link. I'm going to go listen to that again. I oh, really, really flood. liked that first song in the flood. Yeah. <laughs> that was my favorite. That, that got me. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm glad. I'm glad. And, and, and really, I appreciate you coming on and just like sharing, you know, your un, un you know, your un, unfiltered opinion. I think it's really important. And I, I have a tendency to be really pro everything I hear. It's very hard for me to be critical. It's like every piece, like I may very much not like a piece, but I will still try to treat, treat it like a little baby because I, you know, I care about yeah. the medium so much. So to hear your, you know, your uh, very direct, like when you said, I hate it to Metaton, that's great. <laughs> that's great because I mean, it's okay to hate. So you don't have, you know, it's okay to dislike something as long as there's a, a valuable reason as to why for you, you know? So I guess uh, if we've come away with one thing, the thing you loved most is in the flood. That's cool. Uh, last two minutes what can people do if they want to find you at a performance or check you out wherever you are in the world 
Yeah. So if you follow me on Instagram, that's the place I'm most like present and sharing my life, my singing, where I'm singing. And that's just Katrina.Golka. But also, you know, my website, KatrinaGolka.com is a great place to go. Yeah. Cool. It'd be cool. so and cool thanks, to Katrina. connect with people. Yeah. yeah. And it was great to have you on. I really appreciate it. And thanks everybody for checking out this episode of non-gamers react to video game music. And uh, yeah, we certainly got a reaction, didn't we? Uh, thanks a ton. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. See you everybody. Bye. <laughs>